Hello everyone, this is Bipasha Chatterjee, Assistant Professor in the Department of Psychology at Amherst University. Uh, in this video, I will be uh, introducing, uh, discussing about the introduction of uh, industrial psychology and organizational behavior, what they are, their objective, and Okay. Uh, hello, everyone. This is Vipasha Chatterjee. I'm currently working as an assistant professor in the Department of Psychology, Adamus University, Kolkata. And uh, in this video, I will be discussing about the concepts of industrial psychology and organizational behavior. Uh, Again, these are, this is again uh, a part, a type of, sorry, I mean to say uh, this industrial and organizational psychology, industrial and organizational behavior, they are uh, a stream of the applied psychology uh, branch. And uh, it actually uh, focuses on applying the basic principles of psychology into the life, into the work life that we have around us so uh, here firstly we will be uh, i'll be discussing about what industrial psychology is and then i'll move on to organizational behavior so uh, industrial psychology is something that emerged and in uh, the 20th century as a result uh, of the various attempts that were made to understand individuals and organizations. And uh, this field emerged uh, as a scientific field in order to understand this connection, that relation between the people and uh, the organization. So industrial psychology is also known as uh, organizational psychology. And uh, it actually deals with the application of uh, psychological principles and facts to the problems uh, within the context of organizational setup in business, in the industry, in factories, and so on and so forth. So the branch of psychology, the concerns with behavior in workplace uh, and is affected by the physical environment and the organizational culture of the workplace. So that together is what industrial psychology is. And uh, Actually, industrial uh, IO psychology, uh, nowadays uh, it is considered as IO psychology. So that means industrial organizational psychology. So here, basically, it from the name itself, we can understand that it has two aspects. One is the industrial side and the other is the organizational side. So uh, industrial side basically, uh, you know, in, involves looking into how to uh, match individuals to the specific job roles the best through recruitment, selection, training, uh, development, and, uh, you know, measuring job performance, performance appraisal, and so on and so forth. And uh, people who work in this area, they might assess employee characteristics and then match these individuals to the jobs in which they are most likely to perform well. So basically, right man for the right job is something that is practiced in this industrial side of IO psychology. And uh, moving on to the organizational side of IO psychology, it actually focuses on understanding how organizations affect uh, individual behavior. So it can be organization structure, the social norms that are practiced in the organization, uh, the management styles, the, the leadership style that is practiced, the the uh, the organizational climate, culture, the expectations are all the factors that can influence uh, people who are working in the organization. So two sides of the same thing, IO psychology. So IO psychology actually, uh, you know, it revolves around six major uh, aspects or six major uh, subject areas, uh, selection and placement, training and development, performance appraisal, organizational development, quality of work life, ergonomics or engineering. So basically that is what relation between man machine system, ergonomics that we call. Okay, so uh, 
very briefly, I'm going to say what selection and placement is. So it actually involves, uh, you know, developing employee selection assessments, such as screening tests to determine if the job applicants are qualified for the particular position. It involves studying jobs and, you know, in terms of job analysis and determining to what degree tests can predict performance in those uh, jobs. And it is also concerned with the placement of employees and identifying those jobs that are more compatible with uh, individuals' uh, interest area. Training and development is also there. So, of course, uh, the, the, it, it also concerns with identifying employee skills that need to be enhanced through training as a result of performance appraisal as well. So designing of training is also part of this thing. So IO psychologists basically who practice as IO psychologists, they work in areas to develop assessments and techniques to determine if the employees are doing their jobs well. And uh, of course, organizational development is also a part of um, the, the uh, IO psychology and it helps uh, improve organization, you know, shared value, the structure, the system, the strategies that you use in order to function uh, in your daily life, increasing profits, redesigning products, improving the structure of the organization. These are essential in that. Uh, quality of work life, of course, it involves, you know, it is concerned with factors contributing to a healthy and productive workplace. So uh, it involves, you know, redesigning jobs to make them more meaningful and satisfying to the people who perform the jobs, the employees. So, of course, a high quality of uh, high quality work life uh, contributes to greater productivity of the organization and also to the emotional health and mental health of the individuals as well who are working. Uh, ergonomics and engineering, as I said, key, it is concerned with designing tools, equipments, and machines that are compatible with the Okay, so concern with designing uh, tools, uh, equipment and machines that are compatible with human skills, uh, design work systems that uh, humans can operate effectively. So this is what ergonomics is about. So uh, this is about uh, IO psychology, industrial psychology. Uh, now I will move on to uh, organizational behavior where I will just uh, share the screen here now once. Uh, okay, so organizational behavior is again uh, something different uh, from, a bit different from organizational behavior, uh, sorry, uh, from industrial psychology. So um, here basically we talk about uh, the relation, the human uh, relation. So organizational behavior, basically it is the study of human behavior in organizational setup. So it is the interface between uh, the behavior and the organization and the organization itself. So uh, coming to the characteristics of organizational behavior. Uh, so it is uh, part of the whole management which, re which represents the behavior uh, and the organization, the management. So human behavior is generally taken in terms of cause and effect relationships. Generalizations that managers can participate, you know, can anticipate the effect of certain activities and behaviors. Uh, so OB is heavily influenced by several factors like psychology, anthropology, pol science, political science, economics, management, etc. OB encompasses the study of three levels of analysis, namely individual behavior, uh, the individual, uh, the behavior of the organization, 
as well. So OB is a science as well as arts, and it consists of a body of theory, research, and application which help in uh, understanding human behavior in the organization. So uh, here you will see uh, in this uh, section, in this um, chart, how, uh, you know, uh, OB is multidisciplinary in nature. So it has a uh, principles, application of principles from psychology uh, in terms of percept perceptional learning, personality, emotion, attitude, motivation, decision making, creativity. Principles from sociology is also there group dynamics, uh, in terms of group dynamics, socialization, communication, uh, principles from anthropology in the form of organizational culture, leadership, uh, pol political science in terms of interpersonal conflict, organizational power. Uh, in terms of economics, we have uh, decision-making, negotiation, organizational power. Management science, we have technology, organizational quality, and change so from this chart where itself we can understand that organizational behavior is not only borrowing principles from psychology but it is multidisciplinary in nature now uh coming to the next part that is areas of organizational behavior so areas of organizational behavior talks about counterproductive work behavior uh, counterproductive work behavior uh, is the behavior by employees that harm or intend to harm organization and uh, the facilities or, you know, the structure of the organization. Uh, decision making, rational planning model, normative decision making, that is uh, with how decisions should be ordinarily made. Or you can go for descriptive decision making where uh, how a thinker arrives at a judgment. So the process basically. So descriptive decision making aims in, uh, you know, uh, aims to make decisions basically. So employee mistreatment is also involved in OB, like, uh, you know, abusive supervisor, bullying, or, uh, you know, um, Uh, incivility, you know, workplace incivility consists of low intensity, discourage, uh, discourteous, and rude behavior. Okay, so uh, we have um, workplace. Uh, Incivility, which consists of low intensity, discourteous and rude behavior with ambiguous intent to harm uh, that violate norms uh, that are uh, there in the organization or the workplace, sexual harassment. So any kind of mistreatment that is there. Uh, job related attitude or emotions. Okay, so basically it deals with the attitude or the feelings that uh, employees have towards their um, organization and their job in terms of job satisfaction, organizational commitment, the emotional labor, you know, the display of emotion, of certain emotion in the organization, these things. Then we have leadership. So leadership also, there are a number of approaches and theories of leadership, which are, um, you know, very helpful and uh, useful for functioning of an organization. So early theories of leadership, they focus on characteristics of the leader, while the later contemporary theories, they uh, focus on uh, the leader behavior and conditions under which individuals can be effective. So, uh, you know, like, for example, contingency theory says that good leadership, uh, you know, uh, depends on characteristics of the leader and the situation. So leader member exchange theory, you know, they focus on relationship between individual supervisor, subordinate pair. So there are many these kind of theories which actually talks about uh, help, help and uh, helpful uh, leadership styles that are there. Uh, then we also have concepts like, you know, um, managerial roles. Okay, so uh, Mintzberg in 1960s, uh, he actually studied activities of five executives on based on his observations and uh, arrived at three 
categories that subsume managerial roles like interpersonal roles, decisional roles, and informational roles. So then we have the motivation part. So motivation also involves the set of processes that arouse, direct, and maintain human behavior towards attaining certain goals. And we have certain theories of, uh, many theories of motivation, like equity theory, um, expectancy theory, Maslow's theory, incentive theory, uh, organizational justice theory, Frederick Herzberg's two-factor theory, theory X and Y. Okay, so uh, next we have the national culture. The national culture is thought to affect the behavior of individuals and organizations. Uh, this idea was got from Hofstede's cultural dimensions theory. So uh, Hofstede basically surveyed a large number of cultures and identified six uh, dimensions of national culture, which includes power distance, individualism versus collectivism, uh, uncertainty, avoidance, masculinity versus femininity, long-term orientation, short-term orientation, indulgence versus restraint. Then we have organizational citizenship behavior, which actually, uh, you know, talks about uh, the contributions and tasks that uh, employees perform beyond their, uh, you know, uh, designated uh, job roles and responsibilities. Organizational culture talks about the culture of the organization itself. So basically the characteristics of uh, an organization. So based on its belief, the values, the rituals, the symbols and all that. Uh, personality, of course, personality concerns certain patterns of behavior uh, of an individual. The study of personality in organizations is generally uh, relation in relation to specific traits to employ performance. So often big, the big five personality traits are often uh, used in organizational setup. Uh, occupational stress is there, something very uh, prominent. So number of ways to characterize occupational stress. One way is it is to term it an imbalance between the job demands and the resources that help manage the job uh, that is there. Work, family. So uh, Chester Barnard recognized that individuals behave differently uh, acting in their uh, work role than when acting in roles outside their work role. So work conflicts occur when the demands of family and work roles are incompatible. Demands of at least one role interfere with the discharge of the demands of the other. So with this, we come to uh, the importance of uh, organizational uh, behavior. So why is this thing uh, important in the sense that uh, companies uh, whose managers accurately appraise the work of their subordinates, they lower the costs and higher productivity in than those that handle their appraisals, uh, you know, not so well. Uh, people who are satisfied with the way they are treated on their job are generally uh, pleasant to their co-workers and bosses and less likely to quit than those who are, uh, you know, disrespected or disregarded than the way others treat them. People who are carefully trained to work uh, in uh, teams uh, tend to be happier and productive than those who are simply thrown together without any definite organization support. So employees who believe they have been treated fair unfairly on the job are more likely to steal from the employers and to object and uh, object the policies of their organizations than believe they have been fairly treated. So people who are mistreated by their supervisors on the job have more mental physical illness than those who are treated with kindness dignity respect so the human touch is necessary in that way so people who are mistreated by their supervisors on the job have more 
uh, mental, physical illness than those who are treated with kindness, dignity, respect. Organizations that treat employees well with respect to pay benefits, opportunities, security, friendliness, fairness, pride in the company are all average, are all on an average twice as uh, better than others. And uh, companies uh, that offer good employee benefits that have friendly conditions are profitable than those that are less people oriented. So giving importance to the employees, considering them as humans and not robots or uh, something, you know, just they, they don't, are, they are not willing to work or something. That is not the solution for a fruitful and healthy functioning of an organization. So that is what OB or organizational behavior focuses on. Uh, though OB is a separate field of study, it cuts across all areas of organizational functioning. The managers in all departments have to know such things as, uh, you know, how to motivate employees, uh, how to keep people satisfied with their jobs, how to communicate fairly and make teams function effectively and uh, how to design jobs most effectively. So, Dealing with people at work in is everyone's responsibility because everyone is working with people around them, right? So uh, this, this was about organizational behavior. Now, just to conclude, before I conclude my um, session, I would like to draw the attention uh, on uh, the difference uh, between organizational behavior and industrial uh, psychology. Um, because as I have said that uh, industrial uh, psychology is something which focuses on the human resource planning, career development, recruitment selection, uh, you know, um, induction, training and development, uh, compensation, performance appraisal, job analysis, description, and specification. So basically, the focus is solely on the individual employee right there. Uh, that is what organizational behavior is about. Uh, moving on to, uh, sorry, industrial psychology is about. Moving on to organizational behavior or organizational psychology, which actually focuses on the kind of impact that organization, the functioning of the organization has on uh, the employees and how it impacts performance of the employees. So that is, it uh, It uh, it uh, explores communication in the workplace, uh, motivation, group behavior, um, individual differences and diversity. In fact, inclusivity is very much now in demand nowadays. So, you know, it is always uh, essential and always, you know, uh, very uh, helpful if you are having uh, an inclusive environment, uh, work environment where there is no distinction between your gender, race, or uh, socioeconomic status and uh, these kind of things. Uh, leadership, uh, employee well-being, organizational design, development, culture. So all these taken together consists of the organizational psychology, organizational uh, behavior as well. So. Uh, in conclusion, I can uh, only say that industrial psychology, it focuses on uh, measurement of uh, job requirements and individuals' knowledge, skill, abilities, and performance so as to match the individual's uh, performance um, and the uh, to match with the suitable job, basically focusing on uh, the right man for the right job whereas organizational psychology again is talking about uh, it's more like a theoretical concern and it considers processes like you know motivation the work attitude group and organizational climate as well as organizational change and development so together these two aspects so uh, from these explanations from these differences we can understand that no one section can be considered or you know to be taken like okay this is what we are going to do this is what it is uh, so the organizational part is also essential the industrial part is also essential in order to 
uh, establish an organization and run it smoothly. So that is what uh, industrial psychology and the introduction of industrial psychology and organizational behavior uh, is about. So as IO psychologists, of course, they have a huge task uh, to take care of not only the organizational aspects, but also uh, to take care of the, uh, the human aspect or the employee aspect as well. So that is it from uh, the concepts and introduction of industrial psychology and organizational behavior. Thank you.